So you're new to Genshin, you do a 10 pull on the current banner, and while you don't get a 5 star, you do get 4 star Xin Yan. Now what do you get with Xin Yan besides, in my opinion, probably the most forgettable Genshin character that there is? Well, Xin Yan is a Claymore wielding pyro user whose skill can actually produce a shield and do pulsing pyro damage if you do it correctly. So in this video, we're going to look at the character of Xin Yan and talk about what she does and what she can be good for. This video is definitely a video that is good for someone that is new to this character or is a beginner to Genshin overall. So if you do learn something from this video, do be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. With that being said, let's get into this video on Xin Yan. So just like we do with every single one of these videos, we are first gonna look at the build of the character that we are using in this video. One, it might be a good look at a future build. In this case, it is not. Or two, if my character is hitting more than yours, we can figure out why. So my Xin Yan is level 20 out of 40 with 777 attack and 292 defense. Her crit split is 10.4 over 66. Again, I just threw some artifacts on her with 105 energy recharge. Her weapon, level 60 prototype archaic. We will talk more about this weapon whenever we get to the part of the video. And for an artifact set, I did just throw a four piece gladiator on her. She is C1. The only thing that this will change is if she gets a critical hit, her attack speed will increase. That's it, it won't change much for this video. Her talents are 111. I just leveled her to level 20 to get the free wish. Now, before we get in, I want to talk about her second passive that I have not unlocked yet, or the character shielded by her skill will get an increase of 15% physical damage bonus. So this could be good for a character like Frimine or Eula or somebody like that that is doing a ton of uh, physical damage or even uh, Xin Yan herself. But I do not have this passive, so you will not see that extra physical damage. So now that we are through with that, let's go look at her normal attacks, her charge attacks, her skill, and her burst. So going into this domain, I do want to point out that this domain does increase physical damage by 75%. So she is going to be doing a lot of damage. It is mainly because of the domain and the four-piece gladiator set. Okay, so her normal attacks are going to be uh, rather standard for a Claymore wielder. They are going to be... Really one, two, three, four on the normal attacks. Her charge attack is going to be the Beyblade variant of the Claymore charge attacks, which she's just going to spin and spin and spin and spin. So now we're going to talk about her skill. So her skill does have a level component. And what that means is that whenever you hit enemies with her skill, it is going to do an instance of pyro damage as well as giving you a shield. That's where the level comes in. The more enemies you hit, the stronger the shield. So before her first passive, if you hit zero to one enemies, you get level one, level two is two enemies and level three is three enemies. She does have a passive that decreases the number to where if you don't hit any enemies, you get level one. If you hit one enemy, you get level two. And if you hit two or more, you get level three. So at level one and level two, her shield is just going to be a normal shield. It is going to just take hits. It's going to be a pyro shield. So it's going to take more pyro damage than anything else at level three is where it gets interesting. So if you hit two or more with the passive enemies you'll get a level three shield and that will do a pulse of pyro damage every so often so you will get the strongest shield that also reapplies pyro every so often so this can be an interesting shield so we do have that passive that we talked about earlier where if your character is affected by the shield they do get an increase in physical damage i don't have that but if i did I would give her the shield before using her burst because her burst is going to do an instance of physical damage, which is this white number right here, and then do pyro damage. It is going to do an AOE where it's going to hit multiple enemies, but it will do physical damage first and then pyro damage. So it's a mixture. So now we're going to look at a beginner artifact set and for a beginner artifact set, a four piece martial artist is going to be very, very good for her if she is doing on field damage. The two piece set increases normal and charge attacks by 15%. The four piece is that whenever you use your skill, it is going to increase your normal and charge attack damage again. So this is gonna be very, very good if you're using her on field. If you are using her for shielding, then running like a two piece defender's will and two piece really anything else is going to be very, very good. As there's not many ways to get up defense percent early game and this is one of them. For the second two piece, I would highly recommend Exile or Scholar to get up energy recharge so you're using her burst more often. But if you don't have one of those sets, then you can really just do anything else. For the main stats of the artifacts, for on-field damaging, you want to run attack percent sands, then you want to run either an attack percent or physical damage goblet because of how her burst works. And then for the circlet, you want to run a crit rate or crit damage depending on what you need more of. If you are going to be using her for a shielder, then run defense percent all the way across the board. Defense sands, goblet, 
and circlet. This will give her a lot of defense. This will give her a much stronger shield. So now it's going to be time for weapons, and we're going to look at prototype archaic first. Now this does get up attack percent, and it's passive on hit, normal, and charge attacks have a 50% chance to deal AOE, blah, 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 just like an extra instance of damage, right? This can be very, very good for her if you're using her on field. So her damage is based on attack, and her shield is based on defense. So this can be very, very good for her. Now, another option that you have is Snow Tomb Star Silver. You do get this for free in Dragon Spine, and it does get a physical damage bonus. Her passive is kind of similar, where it just does another instance of damage, but this can be very, very good for her because you get that physical damage at the beginning of her burst. For a three-star weapon, you do have the Skyrider Greatsword, which does also get up your physical damage bonus, which can be good for her. And then on hit, normal and charge attack, increase attack by 10% at R5. So that's an extra 40% attack on her, which can be good for damaging. Now, if you want to run her for defense, if you want to run her for shielding, three-star white iron greatsword can be good. The passive is all right. You're not really going to be using her on field a ton, but it still can trigger with her skill. But you really, really want the defense percent. However, there is another craftable weapon, white blind. White blind is very, very good because it gets up your defense a lot. The passive is much better for a character like Noelle because, because you're not going to be using her on field a lot if you're using her specifically for shielding. The passive isn't going to be as good, but the defense percent is going to be very good for a stronger shield. So now we're going to look at a beginner friendly party. The way that these parties are designed to work is that we are going to assume that you've only gotten the character that we're talking about and every other character in this party is going to be one that you could have gotten for free. Now, I do know that Frimine is here. And at one point you could have gotten Frimine for free in an event. So I just kind of had to throw him here. This is going to be an example if you are building her for shielding, where Fremine is going to be on field doing the damage, and we want her skill to be pulsing out so Fremine can cause melt reactions. That is why he is here. If we have her built for on field damage, which we currently do, then we're going to take out Fremine and we're going to put in instead Zhang Ling. Zhang Ling is very, very good, especially with Kaya because of how their bursts work together. But. This is just going to increase damage overall. This is going to allow for us to use Zhang Ling and Barbara and Kaya's skills and bursts off field so we can have Xin Yan on field doing a lot of damage with her physical attacks, with her normal attacks. So with Zhang Ling, we would be having Zhang Ling, Kaya, and Barbara. We would be using Zhang Ling's burst, Kaya's burst, and Barbara's skill for melt and vaporize reactions all off field so we can have Xin Yan on field doing her damage. Now her shield will be pulsing out as well. So she should be able to get in on some of those melt and vaporize reactions as well, doing fairly good damage. But we just want this to increase overall the team's damage. Barbara is going to be there for healing. Um, Zhang Ling is also going to be in there for increasing energy going to Xin Yan and herself. Kaya is there for melt reactions. So this is kind of... So Xin Yan would be our on-field damage dealer, while everybody else would be off-field. And this is a good, fairly good party for a lot of characters if they were built for on-field damage. You could literally take Xin Yan out and substitute in a lot of other characters to fill this role in this party as a beginner. That is going to be it for this video. If you do have any questions, you be sure to leave it down in the comments. Myself or someone else, be sure to answer, and I will see you in the next video.